So for the low, low price of only five euros, you can take 373 steps all the way up to the top of St. Stephen's Cathedral. So the two things that stick out to me most, just checking out Vienna for the first time, is the sheer magnitude of these buildings and the attention to detail. I understand Vienna is almost two million people and that doesn't include the tourists that just pack this place on a regular basis. Some of these churches are a football field high and took 400 years to build. The attention to detail in these buildings and the craftsmanship that went into them it's mind boggling and it's not just like five or 10 buildings. Other than the truly contemporary buildings, almost every building in the main city area has this attention to detail. So ever since art school, I have dreamt of coming to see Gothic, high Gothic, neo-Gothic architecture, and I finally get to do it here in Vienna. St. Stephen's Church is beautiful, it's amazing, but everybody goes to it. But there's another church called Votivkirche, or the Votiv Church, and there's nobody here. You walk in and it's like a ghost town. This is a Friday afternoon. This church is amazing, neo-gothic, 1800s, flying buttresses. I am so happy right now. All right, so you know all this ornate, classy stuff is all well and good, but I came here for something a little more nitty gritty. So let's get dirty. And this is more like it. I haven't been to a city with an amazing graffiti scene in such a long time, and I've been looking forward to it. Just along one of the offshoots of the Danube River, there's this hiking and biking trail, and on both sides, up and down the bridges, up and down the walls, there is just mad graffiti. And I love the beauty and the breakdown. I love the destruction of graffiti and old bridges and rust and all that nastiness combined with this beautiful backdrop of Vienna, these amazing classical buildings. And honestly, it's been too many videos since we just fucking laid it down. <laughs> I'm sipping 15, kept a weapon on me. Blow make bitches, I'm on my bed and stack chicken like what it's gon' be. Crew in the cut, hey, you want us to run when I tell a bit peace. Love is love. Love is love. Adios. 
Love is love. Love is love. Adios. Don't know why I do this. Don't know why I let you play me. But I get that it is your kid. Who made me for me? I don't blame So, this is one of the oldest open air markets in Vienna. I'm walking by the stand, I see this crunchy, crispy deliciousness. I asked the guys, like, oh, what is that? It's like spinach and cheese. I said, I'll take one of those. I had to inquire, what do you call this? He said, spinach pie. It's very creative, Vienna. Mm. All right, so there you are. Amazing day in Vienna, Austria. I'm back in my hostel. This hostel is called Prime Rooms 2.0, and it's probably one of the nicest hostels I've ever been in. We have family dinners every night with eight, 10, 12 of us sitting around the table, just getting to, getting to know each other. There's only 12 beds in the hostel, plus the owners. So it's a nice chill vibe, so check it out. I'll leave a link to it. Yeah, Vienna, amazing. I almost didn't come here, honestly, because I'm pretty fucking cheap. And being in Central or Eastern Europe, uh, things are a lot cheaper. You can live on 30 to 50 bucks a day really easily uh, staying in hostels and not eating out and drinking out all the time. But as you work your way back west in Europe, it tends to get more expensive and Vienna has been notoriously known as being very expensive. But honestly, eating street food, um, having some cheap beers, it's not that bad. I'm living off about 60 bucks a day here and well worth the trip. The extravagance of this city, the history, uh, it's truly amazing. So put Vienna on your list. Check out some of these cheaper countries as well, kind of offset the cost of it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.